you for the introduction and thank you uh, for having oh, me. Um, I know there was quite some comments. Now, uh, for a change, this will be much more physics and much less mathematics. Of course, um, physicists are in the world in order to teach you mathematicians problems to solve. However, in this talk, I can promise you that there will be not much where, um, where, you, will, where you will get lost are basically molecular physics giving divided elements. And I have changed my uh, title somewhat. Originally I was just going to speak about linear molecules. Now I have managed to also start in three. All we need more modest. Okay, as an outline, this next slide may serve. Um, then I will give, give a very quick approach to my formalism. Oh, why would one like to use finite elements? Firstly, you're always looking for new and other methods. The final element method has many advantages. You can adjust the grid on the requirements of the problem. However, if you were to create Cartesian elements with them, or have the bad luck of being close to the nucleus, then you have to work very hard with lots of elements in order just to be able to integrate over the potential. Therefore, of course, classical atomic physics tells you if you're close to Now, the muffin tin approach um, deals, as the word already says, with um, subdividing your total domain into spheres or everything else. Unfortunately, the contrast is not very Well, you can see down there I've got the, a few so small circles inside of the big circle. Initial domain where the wave function. Touch. Obviously, like the way with the cross domain box. Now, two or three sentences about what has been used for periodic solids. There, are of course, linearized operated plane waves and related methods to have it. And since there, you can just take the plane waves outside, your fitting problem is easier to solve. And, um, however, this particular answer will look like the molecules because not really. But once we manage to do this muffin tin calculation, we find elements. elements Solids and molecules. Okay, now I'll just quickly show you the molecular many body Hamiltonian, all kinetic energies, then all um, electron electron interactions, finally, in the last term, all attractive potential particles. Here, 
the nuclei are considered stationary in the von Oppenheim approximation. Just um, but you just need to that uh, it makes sense to define a density functional and to approximately have a good version of it, and then you are able to do reasonably accurate calculations in terms of a um, functional which is defined as sum of the normal color potential plus the Hartree potential plus the variational derivative of uh, Okay, now I introduce this more formally. So I have spherical domains of radii R, M, T, I, M, T from above all these domains omega i. Then omega zero is the domain obtained by excluding all these omega i's from a sphere omega of radio r max centered at the origin. That will then the whole domain. Okay. Right, omega as a sum over domains starting with omega zero and finally all the omega i going from one up to sub n. Now um, in omega zero, we have no singularities and the potentials, the wave function we move. Therefore, we are using um, Cartesian finite elements. And uh, now, the reason I have an index and index here is actually just all states. And in each omega i, I will see a time honored expansion in terms of value combinations of those. And these expansion coefficients in turn are again um, expanded using one dimensional finite. However, now comes the slide wrap. If we want to have continuity, and Domain. And curve so the um of the it does not yet provide you with I have now done such elements for the kind of boundary elements I require, namely curved triangular prisms in 3D and curved quartz in 2D. I've implemented them in Python using NumD and a couple of number of photons are ready for the base. How's the genre indication rules? I connect. I, as uh, practitioners from physics, often do, although I'm aware that there are many people who think that. That is maybe a bit more of a philosophical view. And now, actually, what happens in reality, as opposed to think all omega zero, this initial domain, omega zero with the tilde on top, which is Other region, small omega i, and they are then filling the gaps between the omega i and the omega zero tilde with a good approximation. Now, these boundary conditions for continuity I have now to implement between the 
omega i and the small omega i, the small omega i and the omega zero tilde are, and of course I have to also a bound state um, wave function R max will be a number like 10 or 15 so that now has put this on a slightly more formal footing at least for a physicist I know after all fitting to the time Now, whenever you find an element, especially us physicists, we always say, okay, let us write the expectation value in terms of our coefficients and then um, do the step to the weak formulation that means we... Uh, that in, in terms of all these domains, um, the, the norm is simply an integral over the square of the wave functions over all these domains. Uh, uh, the expectation value of, of the Hamiltonian is a bit more complicated. We have i's and h zeros and h zeros. i is simply in terms of radial coordinates and, and the operator with respect to which it was that plus a effective potential which is the sum of all these other terms that you must have to go and I have written capital R to let we understand that effective potential will not be spherical anymore or will only be spherical if you make it close to the nuclei because they are the spherical component due to the Yeah, and of course outside the H0 is very simple, just minus um, plus square plus the same effective potential. This is not just a way to write it down. Of course, in order to get an eigenvalue problem, we now have to do way of doing that is um, actually to introduce so now I have, of course, what I have now jumped over is the expectation value as well as the expectation value for the energy. I'll write them in terms of certain coefficient vectors. And then you have finite element matrices for the different domains. And, and for the first sum, as well as for the last term, Evaluated, um, assembled, etc. Evaluated to Phoenix. So there's nothing new, and I don't need to go into much detail about it. But now comes the more complicated. In order to now get a global matrices, uh, we now have to find mapping and between the global element. But philosophically, it's not a big difference. It's just on another level. And these will then be matrices called CI, and they are then simply put up. And in most cases, these are just matrices that are empty and have ones, or in some other cases, that are not equal basically like this map. Now, in order to do that in Python, um, the site of my um, library writes the module R's, and that will 
dimensions of matrix algebra with A bit of the computational details. Of course, I'm using GMSH. Well, of course, but I'm sure that quite a number in this room. And uh, what a good drive it provides Python scripts because you can spend it probably the cost. Um, the generalized eigenvalue problem I'm solving in 2D, in, uh, in 2D with structures. So while for a three dimensional for the three-dimensional case, I make use of the Jacobi David, David Davidson, some uh, clever diagonal P conditioner. It turns out that in two, di in two dimension, um, dimensions, uh, the dimensions are still so sufficient. I also now speak about the discretized Poisson equation, which I have not yet really fully implemented. In any case, O times the Hartree potential is 8 pi, the overlap matrix multiplied. Otherwise, you might have to do a more complicated limit on the right. It will then be solved with using conjugate gradient. And in order to um, evaluate the boundary condition or for the Hartree potential, the outer surface, I restrict myself to just the first term in the extension, in the expansion terms of solid form. If I do that, I get a very good approximation because the higher the higher L term I'm coming to oh what did I do now sorry oh sorry wrong button <laughs> Yes, she did the Okay. Which one? Now we come into results. Okay, I start with the two dimensional problem, which of course is. And here, the one nucleus is at z equals minus one, the other one at z plus one, because of symmetry, this is going to to half the domain. And for the ground state, we have now here you can see this uh, typical grid for six boundary elements. These boundary elements are that little green um, quartz that you can see here, and outside the blue. Um, is the uh, grid that was done with GMSH, and finally inside I'm expanding in terms of while labs as a radial functions, which again are actually no, I'm not doing that. I must correct myself. In two dimensions, I'm expanding in both R and uh, theta, so that is then a two-dimensional calculation again. However, this two-dimensional calculation. Um, 
Uh, and the size parameter, the S of the triangulation, is used for the kick control, so a bit, a bit smaller S here and the larger S on the outside. Now the domain omega 1, that gravity 1, is done in R and theta like this. Now I've done these calculations for n theta equals n r equals n. Now one value was of one half. Down here you can see that one reaches accuracies up to minus seven by our n or better. Order of the finite elements three and four. I need to move. Now, this is now a bit more basic in three dimensions because I'm only doing hydrogen. And I, I have now an inner radius of 0.9 and an outer radius of 1.0. And the size parameter now for the GMSH becomes proportional to the distance from the origin. It will be parameterized by S and the outer radius R max. I have now done this calculation for P equals 2 and P equals 4. Unfortunately, with my boundary elements for P equals 3, that is still a problem. And the mapping of the degrees of freedom I did in Python. Luckily, omega 1 and omega 0 bar I could do in Phoenix. The other parametric elements in omega 1 were broken in Python. I said already it's path matrices. And I parallelized um, the calculation about the boundary elements to 42 processors using a pool multi processing. Wave function constant energy is just given for those people who don't remember it. Now, four more slides. Okay, here you can see the um, square fit, and this is for second order. And the total wall clock time goes from 20 to 6. 20 minutes. There is a difference between an exact and um, calculated wave function smaller than 10 to the minus 4 in absolute value. Now the same thing for p equals 4. I've done another least square fit, not, not enough time to discuss details. Now of course the clock time goes up heavily, so that I will probably only do for the final iteration later. And again, uh, accuracy, so in that area from about minus 8, plus 8 in a square, for that zero. The largest deviation is three, to, 3 times 10 to the minus 6. And note, um, the accuracy goes down to better 10 to the minus 8. So actually with the correct usage of boundary elements adjusted to the high accuracy. even the molecular physics. Now the summary is that if you do this multi domain finite element calculations, I do get Minutes, I can do one iteration. I would like to now do C6, E, C6, H6, all seen. At some point, but next, I need to fix the bug with P equals 3. And I do need a proper multi channel calculation inside of the sphere. I also need to improve the symmetry properties of the grid, and I need to speak to the GMSH experts in the audience because my automatic grid generation. And doesn't give me an isosymmetric grid, I need to work. Okay, it's also some parallelization still possible. And finally, of course, if I want to do a real molecule, I need more than one nucleus. And I would like to do water and methane gas. Thank you for your attention, everybody. Only for the interaction.
just the space with touch function. I have not um, brought my values with I have got 